NVIDIA just released a new OpenAI model. Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the truth of generative AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek. Let's get going. So big news this week in the AI world, uh, which is which is tough to say because it's hard to get above all the noise. Uh, but of course, this is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is uh, uh, kind of the poster child for companies that are uh, kicking butt uh, in the world of AI in terms of uh, providing uh, products and services, specifically their GPU processes and the CODA framework uh, to support people who are building AI systems and generative AI specifically. So they just released the NVLM 1.0 family of open source AI models, which is led by NVLM-D-72B with 72 billion parameters. I guess with this, that's what the 17 billion is for. Uh, competing effectively with the industry leaders like OpenAI and Google. Um, so this is kind of interesting because they're in the processor space, and that's kind of how they make their money, and certainly um, building ecosystems around their processors. Uh, CUDA is probably the best example of that. And, and now they're coming out and building models that are competing with some of the other big guys that are out there. And so that's going to be an interesting thing to look at. So um, the model excels according to the uh, press releases that I saw in both version and language tasks, improving text-only capabilities, um, post-multimodal training, and they are able to do this by making uh, certain changes and tweaks in the model, which provide it with some performance advantages over the other alternatives. And I'll put, I'm not going to get too down and dirty in the geeky details with this, the processor by processor comparisons or the model by model comparisons, excuse me. Um, but I'm going to put references in the descriptions, which do provide that. Uh, so if you want to check that out, that's fine. And so, uh, of course, the big news here is this model is open, publicly available. Uh, they enable access to anybody who's interested in using this AI technology framework. And they're looking to accelerate research and innovation. Also, uh, in case you uh, haven't got this yet, they're looking to accelerate the sales of GPUs because that's how they make their money. So razor, razor blades kind of thing. So why is NVIDIA uh, donating their time to build an open source framework? Well, there's a certain amount of benefits they're going to get from that. Uh, probably some service frameworks, pr partnership frameworks, things like that, that are going to be able to put in place. But this is going to drive more sales of GPUs. And that's what they're looking to do. You have to remember big companies... Uh, all of the big cloud providers, all the big technology providers, um, they don't think like a small company. So they'll build something and invest in it, even if they're not going to make a lot of profit over that particular effort. It's designed to sell other stuff. And in this case, it's designed to sell GPUs, which is good for them. They're a business and they're allowed to do that. So this model is uh, being touted as providing good versatility by handling complex visual and textual inputs such as interpreting memes and analyzing images. So some of the uh, visual and textual input capabilities would be the multimodal capability, the ability to process both visual and text uh, data, which allows you to perform a wide range of tasks. And those of you who program AI systems uh, know the advantages of that, enhance user interaction. They're able to understand images and interpreting text, including humor. So they can uh, look at memes and not take it as a reality, and they can work around the whole stuff that's out on the internet, including the good stuff and the garbage, and kind of toss away some of the stuff which is meant to be satire, which is something that a lot of the older AI systems couldn't do. And I had some funny experiences with that over the years. Uh, comprehensive analysis, the ability to analyze images, text, um, to provide deeper insights into complex data. And this benefits fields like uh, you know medical imaging, digital marketing, educational technologies, uh, where the value of understanding both visual and textual images can lead to better decision making. In other words, they're able to make more accurate uh, and they're able to make accurate determinations of these things. And so not as many mistakes are going to be made in training the data, interpreting uh, the knowledge model when, once they, uh, they have been trained. Scalability and efficiency, so they have multiple modalities with a single model lead to a more efficient processing and scalability. And you know they're reducing the need for separate models for different tasks. And so with the uh, uh, the goal to save computational resources, which is kind of weird for a processing company to do. 
Uh, but that's what it's being sold as. Advancements in AI research. Um, so this is the PR portion of the uh, release of this model. Capability aligns with the ongoing trend in AI research toward creating more general purpose models that can handle a range of tasks. Um, and so they're building a model that they view as competitive or better some of the other models that are out there. Uh, and OpenAI, Google, you know, other, mod mo uh, other model builders that are out there. And so they're going to push out in the market as something that should be a viable option. And of course, uh, it's hard to beat free. Uh, if you want to um, download this and get going, I'm assuming, uh, they'll provide you with the capability of doing that. If you want to join the community, it uh, won't cost you a dime. They'll provide you with the ability to do that. So it's a whole open source versus proprietary stuff. They're clearly on the open source side of the uh, side of the aisle. So what does this all mean? Well, improved text performance in the context of the NVIDIA's uh, NVLM-D-72B. Uh, they have the ability to handle and process text and, and task more accurately, as we mentioned earlier, ongoing multimodal, multimodal training. And they're able to uh, learn from both text and visual data and do so in a way that's faster and hopefully better than some of the competitors out there, at least so that's how they're touting this. So typically, when models are trained from multimodal tasks, uh, attempts in text-only tasks, their performance can suffer due to the broad focus of learning. So in other words, they have to do many things and apply many learning patterns at different uh, sources, images, text, um, data, all those sorts of things. However, this model is able to defy the tr this trend by increasing the accuracy on text-specific benchmarks and they're uh, promoting this as an average improvement of 4.3 points. Again, look at the data in the description as to what this really means, how it compares with the other models. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in all the geeky details, that'll be there. I'm not going to list them here. So this means that the model is able to not only maintain, but actually improve the effectiveness of understanding and, uh, and generating text, even as it becomes more capable of handling diverse inputs like images and memes. So this may be a reason why people are going to use this particular model. AI has a problem with uh, understanding, with not understanding nuances. So in other words, if we're, uh, things in there are sarcastic, things in there are a meme, there's humor in there, often they can misunderstand what that data input means or even uh, uh, outputting data. So I guess good to say, best to say it. Uh, AI uh, is getting a sense of humor, but they didn't have a sense of humor. So if you wanted to simulate a sense of humor or basically understand humor or other things that are more nuanced, uh, they had a difficulty in doing that and still have a difficulty in doing that. So what does the reaction be? Well, of course, AI re researchers out there are looking at this as a positive move to NVIDIA making such model openly available. People love open source um, and they like it because they feel like they're making an investment in the intellectual property and not necessarily looking at this as a way to make a profit. However, again, NVIDIA is doing this not for uh, um, not for, for a, uh, charity reasons. Uh, they're doing this because they're able to sell more GPUs, which is smart. And so they're viewing it as a potential accelerant to AI research and development. The open sourcing model allows smaller organization independent researchers to access technology comparable to proprietary systems and they think it's going to change the competitive landscape maybe um, we've had open source versions of almost everything out there whether it's database operating systems um, and certainly ai this is not nothing new in the open source space to attack ai uh, however it's going to be is this thing going to add value to your particular problem it means and we'll get into this in a minute but you know one of the key questions is that open source isn't necessarily free. So in other words, you have to configure the thing, you have to maintain the thing. There's lots of services and uh, money that has to be spent around implementing, maintaining, and building these systems. So if we're gonna do that, we have to consider that as well. So in other words, we may not be paying for the software, uh, paying to license the software from a you know major vendor. Uh, however, we are paying to maintain it, we are paying to install it, as we saw with you know, other open source things like OpenStack, and I was dealing with that 10 years ago. It was like an engineering project to get that thing up and running. Uh, it's much better today, but in doing that, I realized that none of this stuff is free. So even though we're not using proprietary open source as a private cloud technology uh, software, even though we're not using proprietary private cloud systems, uh, we're still paying 
uh, lots of engineering fees and going through lots of testing cycles to get this thing built and deployed. In many instances, I noticed that we were probably paying more money to get an open source version of that uh, up and running and installed than if we paid uh, a proprietary software license fees to a vendor. So you got to consider the trade-offs, and we'll get into that in a minute. So if you read the press releases out there, uh, lots of talk about the open source stuff. So they're looking for it to be collaboration opportunities, fostering collaboration among researchers, developers, and firms. Uh, they think it's going to lead to breakthroughs, so people are able to contribute to the project and improve the project, and they're looking at some value to come from that. So you can do that. You can join the community and you can say, well, I can make this better in this way. And you can uh, work with the community to move particular, move this specific model in a different, more innovative direction. And that's kind of cool you're able to do that. So if you're a big company, you can actually participate in the development of the software development of the IP. That's what open source is all about. It's not really new with this. So they're looking to challenge the industry to move to other more open source alternatives, looking for more transparency, pushing competitors to rethink how they share resources and innovation. So what they're saying is other competitors may react to this and they may absolutely, this may be absolutely right, where it's going to push them to provide better, more comprehensive open source versions of their stuff. And not like they're, some of them aren't doing it today. Um, this isn't going to be the open source AI show, uh, but it's still very, uh, still a very proprietary world world in the world of AI. And so uh, open source projects have a tendency to build trust, community, there's lots of people out there. All they do in enterprises, I run into them all the time when I was a consultant, all they do and all they'll deal with is open source software. So they're gonna only run open source operating systems, open source databases, open source middleware. So they made all the decisions around whether it's open source or not. I understand why they're doing that. They view it as uh, having a more confidence in something that they can have a bit more control in. But again, there's not always a free lunch here. So in moving to an open source, you're limiting the number of options, certainly not limiting, not uh, considering the proprietary systems where they may have more value. And open source, again, is not free. You may not pay for the software, but you're paying for the installation, uh, paying for the localization. The, and that's the people cost. And you know that's where our costs are. It's the talent around these technologies to make them work and open source typically requires more talent uh, to finesse it to make it work and also this is a 1.0 product so chances are if you're going to jump in there's going to be a lot of that there not knowing anything about any kind of bug fixes and quality issues but with 1.0 all that stuff is always going to be an issue and the ability to move the software in a direction where it's going to get better and better and better so uh, if you jump into it now, it may be a bit of a risk, um, but you may be on the ground floor of something that could be pretty cool. So that's a trade-off. So what are the downsides of an open source model? Well, you got ethical and security concerns. Uh, there's a growing risk of misuse, malicious purposes, such as generating deep fakes, automating cyber attacks that we can build within this model. All the ethical concerns that come along with any AI, not just this one. So I'm not necessarily going to sign this there. Also, you may have the security concern. We have a, uh, some, some of this happened a few years ago with the open source stuff. We're, we're getting some software um, supply chain issues where we're using software that's a part of the system that we didn't necessarily develop. And we're finding there's some uh, 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 malware uh, in that. And, and so if you're dealing with these very complex open systems and they're dependent on lots of things, that are being built by other open open source systems or even proprietary systems, you have to understand what they're doing and where that's coming from. And the more you have integration from other outside resources that you don't have direct control over, uh, the more likelihood you're going to run into a supply chain issue, a software supply chain issue, where that supply chain is going to have some malware in it that you may not see coming. And we ran into this a few years ago. I'm not going to dwell on it and, and pick on that company, but it's a possibility out there. So the open source can lead to security issues if you're not careful. Uh, loss of a competitive advantage by sharing their technology openly, NVIDIA risks losing a competitive advantage that proprietary models often provide in terms of monetization and market position, which is uh, kind of, a, I wouldn't worry about NVIDIA uh, uh, going out of business anytime soon uh, because of this or any, any other kind of mistake they can make. But the idea is that they're, if they're not making money on this, they're probably... Uh, aren't going to focus a lot of uh, 
uh, resources on it, certainly in time of a downturn, and that that could be uh, an issue uh, going forward as we're trying to maintain the software. Uh, Need for responsible use frameworks. AI communities faces the challenge of establishing guidelines for responsible use. Need a balance between innovation and, and uh, mitigation of negative impacts. And then finally, pressure, to, pressure on bills, business models. If open source models um, become standard, companies might need to explore new business models to generate revenue, which could improve service-based offerings or enhance support packages, uh, ultimately. So this is going to change the business model of, well, I wouldn't say it's going to do much for NVIDIA. I think they're doing this to sell processors, and this is going to do that. Um, so NVIDIA's open source strategy could reshape the industry, and, and, and again, prompting tech leaders to reconsider how they protect and share AI innovations. I like the open source stuff, uh, and there's a reason to look at it. I just don't think it should be the only option out there for everything I mentioned earlier. So while the release you know, encompasses uh, you know, different, uh, you know, different values. Um, you know, this is ultimately going to be a trade-off like anything else. There's a good reason to use open source stuff. There's a bad reason. There's a, some bad reasons to use open source stuff. And this becomes nothing new. We've been evaluating open source technology, you know, for many years. I was around when it first started to rise out, you know, in the Unix community and it kind of, uh, you know, grew up from there and took hold. And I think that, uh, uh, open source is going to be a viable way to consume enterprise software. You just have to be careful uh, and not going to reiterate the reasons I just told you. So that becomes kind of an issue. So the recap, ultimately, uh, this is significant points. This is ultimately NVLM 1.0 is going to have a potential impact on AI innovation and business models. Okay, duh. Um, I think it's a step in the right direction in that they're doing some minor disruption in the industry. So I think more of this needs to occur. I think some of the bigger companies out there need to open source a lot of their frameworks. It doesn't mean everything. They can have a proprietary version and a scaled down open source version that people are able to leverage. I do think there's so many enterprises out there that are dependent on open source as a way to consume all technology and it's going to be inclusive of AI that it's going to allow them to enable to get more software out there. However, many of those companies are just dependent on software sales, where NVIDIA is really kind of dependent on hardware sales. They sell processors. Um, so Intel also, and some of the other processor manufacturers out there. So when they build ecosystems, CUDA, when they build uh, AI models, like this one we're just talking about now, um, that's how they're going to make money at it. Where the bigger companies, large enterprise software providers, they make money on software. They may sell hardware too. Uh, many of them do. Um, but... Uh, their primary revenue is going to be in licensed sales. And so trying to protect that is going to be a core, core priority there. So whether or not they're going to move into an open source marketplace or move more of their stuff into open source, many of them have open source versions of their stuff these days, it remains to be seen. So this is a step in the right direction where NVIDIA is attempting to disrupt the market. So make sure to share your opinions in the comments below. Let me know what you think. This is kind of a, uh, always a can of worms when I talk about open source for proprietary software. My view is always is it depends. Uh, you have to look at the value of each. Uh, it's never going to be uh, a, a, complete, um, a, a complete slam dunk for open source or, or proprietary systems. You have to look at the business value that comes back. So keep that in mind. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, you know, drop me an email. Put a comment below. Let me know what you're looking for in terms of AI coverage. Uh, let me know if you want more of this, where we're talking about particular products, if you want, we're talking about trends, uh, such as agentic AI and small language models, which we've hit very hard here, or anything else in the AI space. This is an exciting time to be in this space. Uh, if you don't like the way things are going, I wouldn't even say wait a month, I would say wait a week or even wait a day, because it changes pretty quickly. Just the amount of evolution that's occurred in the last two years has been amazing, and it's a fun industry to watch. So keep tuning back in here and I'll keep updating you with what I think are going to be the relevant points that you need to do to do your job uh, in building, deploying, creating strategy, creating plans, creating uh, whatever around the use of AI for the enterprise. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers.